Ready? Okay. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Power Electronics session of the CCE 2022. My name is Mario Andres Aguilar Orduña, and I'm the chair of this session. Um, today, six papers will be presented concerning topics about power generation, power quality, electric machinery, and power converters. The speakers will have 15 minutes to expose their slides and followed by five minutes of question and answers. Please don't turn on your camera while exposing your slides. The audience can raise their hands to post a question or for online participation, please use the hand icon in Microsoft Teams or even the chat box. Well, um, the first work is titled Model Predictive Control for single phase cascade H bridge five level inverter. The authors are Roberto Morales Caporal, Omar Sandra Hernandez, and Andres Valdez. Please, Roberto, are you there? Roberto? If you're ready, you can start your presentation. OK, thank you very much. Well. Good morning, I'm Roberto Morales Caporal from Tecnológico Nacional de México. The other authors are Omar Sandra Hernández from Universidad Autónoma del Estado de Hidalgo and Andrés Valdés Fernández from Universidad Autónoma de San Luis Potosí. On the title of the presentation is Model Predictive Control for Single Phase Cascade Edge Bridge by Level Inverter. In recent years, multi-level converters have attracted a lot of attention for researchers and developers due to their wide range of application in the industrial sector. According to the consulted literature, chairman types of multi-level converters are the most used. The cascade edge bridge, the phase neutral point template, and the flying capacitor. However, the CHB topology is the most used due to its modularity is your control and lower cost. For the control multi-level converters, linear controllers such as PA or PAD are the most used together with push with modulation techniques. However, linear controllers present some drawbacks such as high star average shoot, sensitive to parameters, and slow response to shoot and loss chains. And Model predictive control scheme is an advanced control strategy that has attracted the attention due to its digital nature that allows it to be easily implemented for the control of power converters and in order to solve some of the drawbacks that presents the linear controllers. This figure shows the topology of the single phase, file level, CHB inverter. It consists of two edge bridge, and each one is powered by an independent voltage source. In this case, the AB is the output of the voltage of the inverter. HL represents the current of the load, and R and L denote resistive and inductive load. The outputs of the edge bridge cells are connected in series, such as the synthesized voltage waveform of the sum of the whole individual cells outputs. The mathematical model of the system can be written in this form. A discrete time from the load current is used to predict this future value. Thus, by using the discrete form of the derivative, where T is represent the sampling time, a linear prediction of the model can be approximated in this form. Well, assuming that the source of each cell are equal, the voltage 
the output voltage of the inverter presents high levels and depends on the combination of the switching signals for the upper EGBTs and the negative signals for the lower EGBTs. Thus, the output voltage of the inverter can be expressed in this form. With this uh, inverter topology, there are 16 possible switching states. Or to find the inverter, as we can see in this table. Okay. To be consistent with the discrete nature of the inverter, new switching functions are defined. In this case, the functions have the values 1, 0, and minus 1. To limit the number of transitions of EGBT between consecutive, consecutive levels of voltage, only 90 states can be used to find the inverter as shown in the next state. This table shows the output voltage vectors for uh, the inverter, considering that the voltage source are equal. Okay, the conventional model predictive control works as follows. Once the corresponding variables have been measured, uh, voltage and currents, and considering that the sampling time is very small, the future value of the current reference can be predicted with this digital interpolation. After that, the algorithm predicts the measured currents and its future slope for each of the nine possible voltage vectors. And we have nine uh, future values of the current. A voltage vector one is preselected in order to increase the load current and to track the reference. In this case, the red line. And voltage vectors uh, zero or minus one will be selected in order to decrease the future value of the current. When the load current is negative, A cost function will be evaluated. In this paper, the cost function has a single goal, which is to achieve a minimum current error tracking, and it is evaluated of this form. This is for each of the nine possible currents. This is the program in Simulink. We can see that the input is the current, the sampling time, the current of the load reference, and the voltage on DC link. Okay, in order to make competitions, a PWM strategy was also programmed. PWM techniques generate the switching signals by comparing a load frequency signal. Uh, it's an isodal signal against a group of carrier signals with a frequency that must be less than the switching frequency of the GBTs. The level shift PWM strategy is the most frequently implemented in CHV multi level converters according to the literature because it is simple and easy to implement. In addition, it is the one that presents less hazard harmonic distortion. When the level shift PWM strategy is implemented, the number of carrier signals required to generate a levels in the output voltage is evaluated of this form. In this case, for five levels, we need only four carrier signals. This is the program in Simulink and the results. Okay, this figure shows there uh, shows the results of the output voltage of the inverter when the model predictive control is used and we can see also the load current in this instant a uh, 
the reference change and the current follows it very well because the algorithm selects the same voltage vector until the reference is reached. Here is a zoom of this instant. We can see how the reference change and the current follows it very fast. And in the case when the PWM strategy is used, we can see here also the output voltage of the inverter and the current. And when the current changes, uh, when the reference of the current changes, the current follows it lower than with the other model predictive control. Okay, this figure shows the total harmonic distortion when the PWM strategy is used. We can see here that the TGD is 1.22%. And when the model predictive control is used, we have a total harmonic distortion of 0.79%. Okay, conclusions. The Cascade H-Bridge multi-level inverter presents several advantages, such as the capacity to operate at lower switch on frequencies than a two-level inverter. It uh, presents high quality voltage and current signals and better modularity. It has been shown that the model predictive control algorithm tracks, uh, tracks the current very well having an excellent dynamic response compared to PWM techniques. MPC presents less harmonic distortion in the current than PWM technique. And I should uh, say that for this current implementation and due to the high number of calculations in each sampling time, the use of a high-end digital system such as DSP or PJ is necessary. Questions? Okay, thank you very much, Roberto. That's a, a great presentation. Um, if somebody has questions, please use the chat box or raise your hand in Teams. Nobody? Um, okay, Roberto, I have a question. Yes. Um, how accurate your model should be to ensure a good performance of your controller? Because I I noticed that you said that you need a, a good model of your controller to to operate a, a, mm -hmm. a good, uh, to have a good performance. Uh, I, I understand that you say that how my control performs very well. My question is how accurate should your model be to ensure a good performance for your controller? Uh, yes, you know uh, the parameters of the system very well, such as uh, resistance and inductance. And um, in this case, we use only a, a resistive inductive load. But with the uh, other uh, type of loads, maybe the control needs uh, other strategy. Okay. Um, for example, uh, do you consider the resistance uh, variations when when a certain resistance um, hit? Do you consider that to, to have a good performance? Uh, in this case, no. Well, in um, an implementation, you need a uh, sense of resistance in order to know every time the correct value. Okay. Or the simulation is not necessary. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have a question, please. 
I have one more question. Roberto, good morning. I have one question. Uh, model predictive control is well known. Uh, it's uh, efficiency and dynamic performance on process control on slow systems, let's say. However, for electrical systems, the main challenge, in my opinion, is implementation and how you, you will solve the, the, the computational aspects. I mean, in the sampling time, uh, 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 for model predictive control, because I, I mean, this is the main challenge for, for your uh, uh, propose, proposal. Yes, it's correct. Um, for implementation, the uh, sampling time is uh, very important to select the correct uh, uh, time. I recommend lower uh, 50 microseconds. Because uh, 100 or more are 100 microseconds, the ripple of the current increases in experimental uh, applications. Then uh, the, the research uh, recommend uh, sampling time in the order of 20, 30, or maximum 40 microseconds. And you need, uh, of course, a uh, high then high-end digital system uh, because a microcontroller uh, maybe has all the capacity to, to, to make all the operations of this uh, algorithm. One more question. And how is your, um, how is the, because you are using some PWM uh, 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 block how is the, the frequency of commutation for the PWM? Okay. Uh, uh, I try to have the same frequency for the MPC and the and the PWM, and it's the order of uh, 20 me, uh, kilohertz. For both the strategies. Okay, um, there's another question in the, in the audience. If not, um, thank you very much, Roberto. That was an interesting presentation. Thank you. Um, we move on now to the following presentation title. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Now we move on to the following presentation title, Estimation and Detection of Oscillations in Electric Power System, by the authors Mauricio Sanabria, Irving Lopez, Francisco Beltran, and Maximiliano Bueno. Are you there? Um, Mauricio, you are the speaker. or someone who can present this work. No. Well, if there left time, we move this presentation to the to the ending of this session. Well, um, now we move on to the adaptive incremental conductance as a highly efficient maximum power point tracking algorithm for photovoltaic systems under partial shading. The authors are Jose Diaz Bernabé and Arturo Morales Acevedo. Um, Jose, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, hello. Hello, yes, I'm here. Um, if you're ready, you can start. Yes, yes, I can start. I, 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 I don't know if you can see my presentation. Can you confirm, please? Yeah, if we can see your presentation. OK, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending this presentation. My name is Jose Luis Diaz. I'm going to talk about the adaptive incremental conductance algorithm uh, for photovoltaic system under partial 
shading conditions. Uh, this work is a collaboration with Dr. Arturo Morales Acevedo of Electrical Engineering Department of Simbestab IPN. Uh, this presentation is structured as follows. First, I'm going to introduce fundamental maximum PowerPoint algorithms. Then I'm going to talk about our mind concern uh, for a system on the shading conditions and its modeling. In the results sections, I'm going to talk. I'm going to show the behavior of PV modules under shading conditions through its static current voltage and power curves. Uh, then I, I'm going to show the behavior in time of the incremental conductance and the adaptive incremental conductance algorithms for global maximum power point tracking. Finally, I'd like to address some conclusions of this work. This is this table briefly summarizes some uh, maximum power point tracking algorithms proposed for photovoltaic systems. Uh, conventional algorithms work fine under uniform iridium conditions, but they might find a local maximum power point instead of a global maximum power point under shading conditions. Improved algorithms have been proposed for photovoltaic system and might be able to look for and quickly find uh, the global maximum power point under sharing conditions because they don't produce enough power oscillation around the maximum power point. These algorithms have higher uh, tracking efficiency than conventional methods. Uh, novel algorithms require uh, much more parameters per string information and more complex implementation to get successful results. It's necessary to say that improved algorithms don't require additional detailed information of the previous string, but uh, only a few well-tuned parameters. Uh, here, uh, this is a single lob photovoltaic system where uh, the MPPT block uh, modifies the converter duty cycle to make the maximum power power point tracking. Uh, under uniform irradiance conditions, the typical curve of the current and voltage are like that of, of a single PV module, but multiplied by the number of serial modules. Uh, flying objects uh, like clouds can shape several modules, the photovoltaic system might not work properly. The maximum power point decreases and the hotspot effect might damage shaded modules. A uh, practical solution is uh, to collocate a bypass diode uh, across the photovoltaic modules, uh, but uh, this solution uh, produce uh, a multi-step uh, current curve and multi-peak uh, power curve. So uh, a conventional algorithm might file to find the global maximum power point at P2. So a conventional algorithm might jump from P1 to P3 instead to P2. So uh, the main purpose of this work is to verify that the adaptive incremental conductance might track the global maximum power point under a sharing profile with very high tracking efficiency as other alternative methods. Uh, this is a one diode equivalent circuit for photovoltaic model, module modeling with anti-parallel uh, diode for mod module protection. Uh, the equation one uh, gives the current as a function of, of the voltage. The equation two gives the for a current as a function of the iridium G. 
the question three gives the uh, diode dark current uh, depending on the temperature of the cells. Um, the question four is the uh, modeling of the photovoltaic string. And equation five is the average model of the pulse converter. Here I present the conventional incremental contactance algorithm. Uh, at this algorithm uh, works as follows. At the left side of the maximum power point, the conductance G is greater than uh, incremental conductance DG. At the right side of the maximum power point, uh, the conductance G is, is smaller, smaller than the a differential conductance DG. Sorry, the negative, the negative. And at the maximum power point, a conductance is equals to the negative of the incremental conductance DG. So uh, the this algorithm uh, adds or subtract a constant correction term for the Dewey cycle according to equation six. Depending on the where is the operating point at the left or at the right, it, it would add or subtract a constant correction term of the previous converter duty cycle. The adaptive incremental conductance uses the general con conductance function uh, to modify, to add or subtract a not non-constant correction term of the converted duty cycle. So uh, the function GB or con general conductance is uh, so large, uh, far away from the maximum power point, and so small when when you approach to the maximum power point. So we have here a a non-constant non a correction term for the duty cycle. The parameter N NIC is a parameter that is adjusted in design to limit the maximum uh, correction term this tip. Uh, the performance of the algorithms is evaluated through the tracking efficiency that is given that the integral of the power uh, collected on the uh, MPPT algorithms over the theoretical power of the PV modules. Here uh, I, I present the behavior of a three module PV string under uniform irradiant conditions. Uh, each module receives one sun solar irradiance, a sun equals uh, 1000 watts per square meter. The current curve looks like as a single module. Uh, there is only one uh, global maximum power point at bit one. Uh, each uh, module voltage is uh, varies from zero to its open circuit, and the PV stream voltage uh, is equally distributed among the three PV modules. This slide shows the properties of a three module PV string under shading conditions. Uh, two modules receive uh, uh, one sound and one module receive uh, only one and a half sound. So there is, uh, in the current curve, there is uh, two levels. And in the power curve, there is uh, two peaks, the power peaks. P2 is the ma global maximum power point at, at the center of the curve. And P1 is a local maximum power point. The PV module voltage is not equally distributed among the two modules. The shaded uh, module has a negative voltage because the antiparallel diode action, so it has a negative voltage. 
We have proposed uh, this changing profile to investigate that the behavior of, in time of the incremental conductance and adaptive incremental conductance algorithm. Uh, the condition A is the ideal case where there is no shaded modules. Uh, only there is only one global maximum power point. In the condition B has two iridium levels and uh, two in the current graph there is uh, two two levels for the current and two peaks uh, in the power curve. Uh, the global maximum power point is P2 is a, at the center of the curve. In condition C, there is three iridium levels, so the current graph has three three levels, three steps. The global maximum power point is in the center and at P2, P1 and P3 are local maximum power points at left and right sides respectively. In condition four, there are three arrays in level two, levels two, and the max global maximum power point is at the right side of the curve. Uh, we show the expected behavior in time of the incremental conductance algorithm uh, because a constant a constant correction term for the duty cycle. Uh, this algorithm uh, shows uh, enough ripple on the current and enough uh, ripple on voltage. So the power trace has uh, power oscillations around the maximum power point. Uh, uh, it, 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 is that, it is said that this algorithm uh, never remains uh, at the global maximum power point, so it oscillates around it. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, the maximum, uh, if the, sorry, uh, this, this algorithm uh, misses the global maximum power point for cases B and C. So uh, the efficiency is reduced. Uh, we showed expected behavior in time of the adaptive incremental conductance algorithm. Uh, this is to its behavior in time. Uh, there is very small ripple to add to an adaptive uh, correction term and don't contribute to higher power loose, losses. The global maximum power point was located for each case in the proposed, proposed chain sequence. So uh, the incremental conductance, adaptive incremental conductance is simpler and has a, a good performance and has a tracking efficiency of 99 point 34%. In this table, uh, I sh we show the optimized parameters and the resultant dynamic tracking efficiencies for the simulated algorithms. Uh, the incremental conductance has a 83.28% of efficiency, and the adaptive incremental conductance has a 99.34%. Conclusions, uh, the shade. The shaded modules uh, make the build string current curve to have multi multiple steps. The number of iridium levels equals the number the, of uh, steps and equals the number of power peaks of the power curve, but only becomes the global maximum power point. The maximum global maximum power point decreases according to the shape, but the voltage uh, at the GMPP appears nearby a multiple of the PV voltage BM. The, this simulation allows us to observe the behavior in time of the incremental conductance and the adaptive incremental conductance algorithms for a three model PV string under a shading shape. So to compare the tracking efficiencies, the incremental conductance misses the global maximum power point under critical conditions B and C. The resulting tracking efficiency was only 83.28%. 
The adaptive incremental algorithm successfully tracked the global maximum power point. The proposed under the proposed sharing profile uh, showing a tracking efficiency of 99.34%. This is comparable to more complex of computing with the AIC simpler than to implement than those alternative uh, algorithms. Thank you so much. Do you have any question? Thank you very much. And there's some questions. Please raise your hand or use the chat box. Okay, can you open your camera? Please, Jose, can you turn on your camera, please? Yes, yes, yes. There's no question. My camera. I don't know why. Can you see me? Ah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Well, Jose, I have a question. Um, yes. For example, I I understand that your algori algorithm considers partial shading on photovoltaic systems. Yeah. Um, what happens, for example, if a model is broken? Yeah. It can. That, that it can that's a good broken. question. If yeah, a if a model is broken, as you say, uh, it's similar to have a, a shading conditions. Let me back to the slide at the first uh, the third slide. Sorry. Here, if you have a, a, a corrupted module, it's similar to have a, a, part, a partial shading condition. Even if you have a, a not reliable PV module or corrupted PV module, uh, that module would fail. That module uh, become a cloud instead of a generator. You have here three, three serial generators or three generators connected in serial. So if a PV module fails, that module becomes uh, a load instead of a generator. So the bypass diode protect that module and uh, make useful the complete uh, PV string. Okay, thank you. Um, I have another question. Um, PV yes. systems are compounds of numerous photovoltaic modules. Um, is your controller easily implementable in large systems? Yes. With yes. 100 for example. Uh, for example, a uh, PV string with uh, 12 or, or 15 PV modules might produce about 500 volts. So uh, uh, the suitable, suitable uh, current conditioner and voltage conditioner might uh, help to introduce the a current um, voltage signals to the maximum power point uh, controller. So uh, the controller ma uh, can modify the duty cycle of the DC DC converter. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, if there are another question, please go ahead. Jose, good morning. Get uh, out. Hi, good morning. Um, your, 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 your work is quite popular because MPTT algorithms are, um, are, are uh, have received a lot of attention in the literature. And, and I was wondering about the implementation issues and also about the, 
the artificial intelligence uh, techniques. Uh, what about that approach and, and, and your possible implementation? And specifically, is, is that possible here in Mexico City? Yes, yes, it's possible to implement uh, every maximum power and point algorithms. So alternative uh, algorithms. So it's possible to implement that, to implement that, that kind of methods to track the maximum power point. So uh, the difference is that uh, novel uh, or alternative in, uh, met methods as FUSI, uh, artificial neural networks, ABC, uh, bioinspired methods, is that these methods require uh, an a more complex uh, implementation. Uh, so you need to a high performance microcontroller or DCP to to a storage uh, uh, the the uh, hundreds of rules or etc. Uh, so the uh, you need more parameters to 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 tune. So uh, the advantage of improved uh, methods is that that methods don't require information about the pivot string, uh, and so I uh, will tune uh, a few parameters. So uh, uh, these methods uh, ha has the advantage that uh, are easy to implement, it, to implement, and and it has a good response, a good tracking efficiency as by spiral or intelligent methods. Okay, thank you very much, Jose Luis, for your interesting exposition. We thank, thank you. you. Okay. Well, well um, the following question is mine. So I will present myself. <laughs> Hello, good morning. We will choose our session chair because uh, the next, the next board will be presented by Maria Andres Aguilar Orduño uh, with the work Maximum Power Track, ma ma Maximum Power Point Tracking for Direct Drive Wind Turbines, an active disturbance radiation control approach. And the paper has been co-authored also by Professor Ever Silva Ramirez and Brian Camilo Gomez Leon. And Mario, you can start. Thank you very much. One moment, one moment. Ah, sí, gracias. You can see my slides, right? Well, um, my presentation is titled Maximum Power Point Tracking for Direct Drive Wind Turbines and Active Distribution Reaction Control Approach. My name is Mario Andres Aguilar Orduña, and this is a joint work with Professor Ever Silva Ramirez and Brian Gomez. -Hill. I'm going to start saying that a wind turbine is a wind energy conversion system specialized in transform, in transform kinetic energy of the wind into electrical power. The two most often used uh, generators are the screw cache induction generator and double test induction generator. But when we talk about direct drive wind turbines, the PMSG, the permanent magnet central generator, is the chosen one. So let's define a permanent magnet synchro generator as an electrical machine that transforms rotational kinetic energy into electric energy with the peculiarity that its rotor is compounded by permanent magnets. And the frequency of the electric current generator are intimately related with the angular speed of the generator. The PMG offers several characteristics, for example, a high power density, high pole per number, low construction and maintenance costs, and full grid decoupling. This makes the PMSG robust against, against grid disturbances. 
here we have two um, images of wind turbine. In the left, we have a direct drive wind turbine. Here, notice the size of the electric generator. It's much, much bigger than that employed in conventional um, structures. Both wind turbines are of variable pitch and variable speed. This kind of wind turbine, this topology of wind turbines have four work zones. In zone one, the wind speed is too low to overcome the friction forces and, uh, and the inertia of the machine, so the wind turbine remains stopped. In zone four, the wind speed is so high, so the machine must be stopped to avoid um, failure and destruction of the, of the whole system. In zone three, the wind turbine works at its nominal at its nominal speed. So the blade pitch angle is adjusted to limit the, the amount of power extracted from the wind. And finally, here in zone two, where this work takes place, the wind speed is is above the cutting speed but under the nominal speed. In this zone, the blade pitch angle are, is fixed at zero degrees and the, and the um, angular speed of the wind turbine is controlled to follow the so-called maximum power curve. Well, we are going to model the whole system into three different parts. The blades that transform the kinetic energy of the, of the wind into mechanical rotational energy, the permanent magnet synchronous generator, which converts the rotational kinetic energy into electrical power, and the three-phase converter. This is used to control the angular speed of the wind turbine and the electric currents of the pin energy. Um, the amount of power extracted from the wind by the blades is given by this equation, where rho is the air density, A is the area swept by the blade of the wind turbine, BW is the wind speed, and CP is a power coefficient. This power coefficient was first proposed by Heyer in 1998. Um, this is a function, CP is a function of the blade pitch angle beta and the tip speed ratio. Uh, it's worth mentioning that the power coefficient is characteristic of the aerodynamic design of the blades. The torque is given by this equation, and we are model, modeling the drive train as two rotating mass attached by a uh, torsional spring, uh, simulating the, the stiffness of the, of the rotor shaft. <coughs> to model the permanent magnet synchronous generator, we are assuming a three-phase star-connected uh, generator. And by applying the Clark and then Park transformations, where the Park angle is selected as the product of the number of pole pairs and the angular position of the generator, we get the following electrical equation in the synchronous reference frame. Here, Rs is the stator resistance, LD and LQ are the stator inductances. Omega is the angular velocity. Kappa is a constant proper of the Clark transformation. And lambda is uh, the, the permanent magnet flux constant. Electromagnetic torque is given by this equation. Here notice that it only depends on the electric current IQ. The, th the three-phase converter is modeled assuming that the dynamics of the transistors is, the, is fast enough to model it as ideal switches. Okay. Regarding all the equations of the system, we notice that all the phase variables are, can be expressed in terms of the angular position of the, of the blades and the direct current ID. And the same occurs with the control inputs. So, the direct current ID and the blade 
um, position, angular position, qualifies as that output of the system. Deriving the flight output, we can obtain the, the input to output model of the PMLG. And following the active disturbance reaction methodology, we lumped into a total disturbance term all exogenous and endogenous disturbances affecting the plant, and namely um, neglected dynamics, non-linearities, uncertainty of parameters. And finally, we work with this simplified model of the PMSG. Um, um, before talking about the controllers, we need to talk about the control objectives. The first control objective is the maximum power point tracking task. We can notice from the power coefficient curves that we get the maximum power coefficient, the maximum CP, by fixing the blade pitch angle beta at zero and um, working at a tip speed rate of 7.3. Um, with these values, we obtain a optimum angular speed. We can notice that if we vary the angular speed at different wind speeds, we obtain a set of maximum power points. And the set of all these power points gives the, the so-called maximum power curve. This, uh, this is our desired reference. Our second control objective is to reduce the copper losses. These copper losses, we can so then in the using the instantaneous active power equation here we can notice that to minimize this effect we need to regulate towards zero the direct current id these copper losses are are um, often manifested in the machine as heat so from the simplified model of the system we propose a PI controller where the design coefficients are computed like this to ensure asymptotic stability of the controller to regulate the ID current to, to our zero. The second control objective is the maximum power point tracking task. To achieve this task, we, we use the simplified error model and use a reduced order extended state observer to estimate the unmeasurable phase variable. Here, the, the variables with, with the hat represent the estimations of the, of the states of the systems. From its characteristic polynomial, we can notice that the design coefficient lambda must compound a Hurwitz set to ensure asymptotic stability of the observer. With those estimations, then we propose an a state estimate feedback controller considering or taking into account the total disturbance term. Notice that only the, the direct, that only the angular position of the, of the plate is measurable. From its characteristic polynomial, once again, we notice that to ensure asymptotic stability of the controller, the, the design parameters gamma must compound a cure with set. And finally, we implement this controller in its transfer function form. To test the performance of our controller, we, we do several numerical simulations in a five megawatt wind turbine. And we also design this realistic wind profile using the aerospace block set of, of MATLAB. This wind gust is designed to have a 11 meters by, by second average speed. This, this wind profile also has uh, wind gust uh, components and turbulence characteristics. We can notice that the overall performance of the, of the system, the optimum angular speed is tracking just well with a little error as shown in the, in the error graphs and also to the, the ID current is around zero. Doing a zoom in, at the very beginning, we noticed this smooth trajectory 
this we we use this uh, trajectory to start the system, avoiding um, hard um, effects in the hard loads in the in the system. Notice that the average control signals are always bounded, and the electric current ID is around zero. Another sum reveals this ripple in the optimum angular speed. This ripple is presented in the PMG angular speed, not in the in the blade, in the blade's angular speed. This ripple is transferred to the average control signals and the ID current. Um, well, the advantage is that this ripple is finally filtered by the storage elements like capacitors, inductor, inductors, and, and power banks, battery banks, sorry. To conclude my presentation, we can say that we use a model of a direct drive wind turbine and considering or taking into account the stiffness of the rotor shaft. This consideration makes the, the wind turbine an underactuated system. We take advantage of the different flatness of the PMSG to design an ERC controller and API to, to solve the MPPT task and to reduce the copper losses. Um, sim uh, numerical simulations show school tracking performance despite the neglected dynamics, the disturbances affecting the system. And for further work, we are um, now working, currently working, in an experimental platform to implement these, control, these controllers. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions, please. Thank you very much, Mario. Um, is there any question here from the audience in the room? Sandro, Claudia. Or also from the attendees into the matrix, is there any question? No. I have two questions. Yeah. Mario, um, because you are combining um, uh, flatness -based, a flatness based controller with PEI and the ADRC uh, control scheme. Um, how is this uh, compared with other uh, real time controllers uh, into the literature? Okay, How efficient the, is this uh, versus the other alternative? Okay, the, in, specifically the ADRC controller uh, shows a better performance. I don't show here the, the simulations, but in general it, it performs better um, because the extended state observer. Um, conventional controllers do not observe anything. Yeah. Most of them use a table and a switching table where depending the velocity, they switch the, the converter. The ADRC, uh, specifically using the, the flatness property, uh, correctly estimates the disturbances and the neglected uh, nonlinearity and compensates them to, to achieve a better performance. Okay. I have a question. Yeah? Okay. Which controller is um, we are implementing these controllers into a DSP. And it's, it's planned to use an FPGA, but um, we are testing it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there another question? One more question, Mario. Um, yeah. Because uh, your disturbance forces, you have to consider that uh, this this uh, this should be bounded or something like that. Yeah. But uh, thinking in, in in a realistic uh, uh, situation, how will be the the the, the wind turbulences, uh, for instance, from in Oaxaca? How 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 I I will prove that these wind turbulences are bounded or? Or that, that that will result in stable behavior. Yes, um, there's a lot of information about the the wind profile. For example, in the Airosa in Oaxaca, mm -hmm. no, La Ventosa, sorry, mm -hmm. in, in Oaxaca, uh, we can um, we model or we design or wind turbine or or controller considering this um, statistical. Um, 
results. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need to, to design properly the, the, the controller and the wind turbine. Yeah, because you know that in some uh, critical situations, you have to use some break or, or, or even to modify the angle of the yeah. turbines. Yes, in real life, uh, the, the wind turbines have a mechanical break to, to stop in an emergency the, the whole wind turbine. Also, the blade pitch angle is adjusted to, to stop the, the wind turbine. And I think that the, the PMG also can be used to stop the machine, but that will require to, to drain um, energy from the grid. And yeah. that's not the, <laughs> the goal of, of this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, um, we will thank you to Mario for your for Thanks, his sir. presentation. Thank you. And now we will switch we, we, we will switch uh, uh, of session chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, our next presentation is titled Performance Analysis of Direct Torque Control of Induction Motor using Snetly Real-Time Controller by Santosh, Jadav, and Nitin Ramesh. Uh, Santosh, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Uh, thank you very much, Santosh. Um, yes. If you're ready, you can start your presentation. Yeah. yeah. You can show your slides, please. Shall I start, sir? Yeah, yeah, please start. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm representing this paper in this prestigious conference uh, titled as Performance Analysis of Direct Torque Control of Induction Motor using Snetly a Real Time Controller. Uh, I'm also I'm one of the other, and one of the other other is it's in the mix best name. I'm Richard Scholar in the Department of Electrical Engineering from Government College of Engineering, Aurangabad, in India. Coming to the introduction point of view, that uh, we have seen a lot of control techniques, you know, 4C control techniques, DTC control techniques, which are uh, widely used for the AC motor control drives. In the last uh, decade also, we have seen the continuous evolvements in the field of power electronics and drives. The demand for the real-time prototype controllers are generally um, more rapidly increasing, and of course, we required for, we require the type of controllers uh, where we where we uh, develop our control algorithms in a not in a difficult manner we should develop our control algorithms in a optimizing manner so that uh, that point of view uh, made me uh, like these fpga controllers are very helpful in the uh, field of ac drives when you are talking about the ac drives you now that major area is sensorless ac drives so when you are using speed estimation techniques that times more difficult control algorithms are there. That time you you have to use you have to use the very advanced control techniques like uh, FOC techniques. In that time, FOC control techniques are involved in lot of equations, and due to that complexity will definitely increase. To avoid the complexity, we should have to propose some controllers, and we should use advanced controllers. In this con in this paper, I have used Snetly real-time controller, which was previously designed, which is re, uh, re, uh, recently designed for Snetly controller, Smart Vortex team. I have used that controller here. And in conventional practices, am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. 
uh, in conventional practices, microcontrollers and digital signal processors like DSPs are used to rely such control algorithms as we uh, we know that SP uh, or 32 microcontrollers and uh, C, uh, C, the C controllers are there, uh, Texas Instruments controllers are there. So in this, the, the difficult thing is that they are using, they are developing algorithm one way and they are using uh, they are developing one way and they are deploying in another platform. But whereas in, in this controller, the reason is to propose the controller here is deployment and designing on the same platform so that not such, uh, not such uh, engineers are uh, really required for to design the, these controllers. These controllers are really helpful in terms of manpower and also execution purpose so that way that way it is very relevant while you are implementing uh, hardware implementation or else like you if you have the complex models that time you have you need some kind of skills especially in the conventional practices while you, while you coming to this controller so deployment and designing in the same platform uh, not kind of messy environment won't you you won't see here so what i am proposing here i have developed that uh, i have designed direct torque controller which is conventional direct torque control algorithm in this con in this real time controller for induction motor so the performance analysis here i have done by using numerical simulation, by using uh, MATLAB simulation software, as well that same results we will, we had, we had compared with the Netlink controller. So while doing this, we got like this controller is uh, pretty shoot for the, pretty suitable for this AC drives, like robust performance, uh, that in general AC drives require robust performance and the results are uh, pretty good when you are uh, seeing the tracking performance. So comparison of DTC to FOC, there are some similarities are there. And the FOC is of con uh, consisting lot of conversions like park 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 transformations, clock transformations. And DTC, wherever you are considering DTC, it is like a very fast control algorithm. So generally, a lot of uh, lot of lot of controller conversions are not required in DTC. It is very basic thing, and uh, you have to you have to more more focus at parameter sensitivity, sensitivity in case of the sensorless. If it is uh, uh, with encoder, then you have to concentrate concentrate about the uh, PWM okay. modulation. Whereas in the case of FOC, when you are talking about the DTC, you should you should talk about the control tuning loops that PID controller. So as you are aware that this vector selection table is there, sector detection you should get, and flexion torque estimator is also available, and voltage calculation. While you are giving DC supply here, and then inverter circuit is here. From the, this two level inverter, this supply you are giving, you are going to give supply here and the inverter is there. And from that we will calculate voltage calculation. And then we have to convert that voltage calculation to VS, VS the clock transformation, VS and IS. And then we will find out from the flux estimate, estimate flux and electromagnetic torque. And then we will compare with the reference values. If error is uh, very less, then if uh, it's pretty good, but if it's more, then it will go to the flux controller and torque controller, and it will change the position, uh, depends upon the vector selection table. While you're seeing this basic one, like the method used for variable frequency drives to control the torque, and uh, uh, finally, you, you may say like speed of the three phase AC electric motor. So estimate of uh, motor magnetic flux and torque based on the measurement of voltage and current of the motor. As you see this diagram, phase currents we are giving and phase voltages we are fetching that IA, IBC and BA, VBVC. And then flux and torque estimation from there. 
and then flux reference and torque reference we will give to the flux uh, hysteresis controller and torque hysteresis controller and flux and flux sector and torque we will give and from the lookup table also you can use lookup table or you can select switching table or whatever method that you are going to do that will generate transistor control signals so algorithm is first we i have explained you that i alpha i beta and we are for we beta by class transformation that is three phase to two phase and then we will find out we will calculate the vector flux uh, phi s a alpha and phi s beta and then total flux we will calculate here and position of the flux we will divide into uh, six sectors sector 1 sector 2 sector 3 4 and 5 and 6 uh, the sectors like minus pi by 6 to pi by 6 like that so this is represents one sector another sector third sector fourth and fifth sixth like similar way from that we will calculate the torque after estimating this one and uh, phi s alpha and phi s beta and we will find out torque and we have d5 by d theta d theta and 10 we will give the will give the 1 and 0 position and 1 0 minus 1 and then states different states that i have previously attached here from x1 this is this is active this is the here is 0 0 0 and 0 0 1 1 that is a null state and then from one state to other state we have to change in one one step from moving sector 1 to sector 2 depends upon i have made this table and then coming to the designing in dtc in matlab so flux and torque estimation block is this and direct torque controller block is this from that uh, measurement blocks i have made this inside this so from first supply side i have given supply uh, we are uh, taking supply from a b c to convert into the x alpha x beta like b alpha v beta then we will give it to the low pass filter from the low pass filter alpha beta to convert again and we will find out finally stator flux theta and torque here is a blocks are there in matlab that uh, from this using this matlab function I have designed the switching table coming to the designing using this netly platform netly platform is of having the is of having the udp blocks as well as scientific uh, scientific type 1 processor scientific uh, scientific type 2 processor legacy processor logical processor system type like in matlab how matlab has designed the same in the similar way uh, to compare to in, to interface matlab the same design in the uh, netly controller also is designed so in that um bo blocks are communicate with matlab interface to receive data via gigabit ethernet like 1 gbps and data format is ieee 75432 bit floating point receive eight channel input data from matlab all are like that and 32 bit registers also here for the scientific type 1 processor and type 2 processor and legacy processor and logical processor system time maximum sample time is 10 microsecond this is the snetly uh, window in that we will design we will design uh, like here you can see udp blocks are there these are the register and here receiving side and this is transmission side this is tx and meanwhile we are using scientific processors legacy processor um, system clock here we will define sample times there these are the designs design platform these are the designs in made in snapple platform and using result and coming to results electromagnetic torque from electromagnetic torque 42.44 newton meter we have given so from 2 seconds it gives some load disturbance and again and the and within the short span of time it reaches to the it reaches to the again zero and again sustain at zero and speed while you are taking speed here from 100 radian seconds 100 radian per second we are giving 
in the negative region also we are giving after 2 seconds we have given that small due to this small problem small disturbance it is again tracking to the negative speed so little we have to implement in the further work we have to implement to reduce this peak shoot using different techniques like lookup table or svm table like any method we have to implement for <clears throat> this is three phase current and nameplate details that we have used for this project the stator resistance and all our nameplate details available in the three phase induction meter so these are the results that whatever the waveform that i got in matlab the similar designs matlab design like matlab design we have designed in netly that netly platform that design is different and matlab uh, design is different both are having different blocks each uh, each control a uh, matlab is of having different blocks and this netly controller is also having different blocks these are the results for the for the dtc control method and this is this is electromagnetic torque and this is estimation of reference flux to the uh, reference flux to the estimated flux this is this red line is flux reference and we are estimating this of course this con this controller uh, like small uh, small from transferring data from matlab to the netly and netly to matlab is like little microsecond so due to that some data we are not able to produce here and here speed response and this is starter current and conclusion coming to the conclusion so this controller fpga based this controller is used to study the performance of this dtc conduction dtc induction motor drive the proposed controller is having jailing kartik on fpga controller which is a 150 megahertz clock uh, clock source so the real time controller applications in real time control applications these controller will be competed for competed in the competed for the other controller definitely our next future step would be uh, in the area of sensorless ac motor drives here the important conclusion which i have drawn from here is when you change in motor speed that immediately causes the uh, change in torque response and current deviation in the dtc fed induction motor drive so that like tracking when you are when you are talking about the sensorless the speed estimation techniques are there so estimation techniques means you have to uh, get the rotor position you have to get the encoder position very quickly and precisely so that time more means transferring of data from software to hardware should be very high so in that cases it will be definitely useful so this is presentation this is my this is from my side and acknowledgement from i would like to thank uh, smart protex team for their assisting designing process and uh, we are content, we are developing for the upcoming like in hardware assistance or hardware also we will develop hardware shortly um, our website is also there we are and these are the references that i have followed here thank you Thank you very much, Santosh. Thank you. Um, there is any question in the audience for Santosh? If there's a question, please use the box chat. Uh, we have a question. Um, it says. Santosh, can you can you show your PPT presentation in full screen? Oh, sorry, sorry, no. <laughs> um, well, um, Santosh, I have a question. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What advantages does Snetly has over a DSP, for example? Sorry. Um, what advantages does this Netly platform has over using a DSP. 
yes in uh, when you are in academic part like when you are from academic side so generally you uh, you don't have enough research grants generally from, from academic point of view i am explaining so that time what you, you need more manpower for to produce like to build some uh, different control algorithms you need some extra person where you are in uh, when you are while you are doing the same project in netlay controller controller is available uh, that you can do by assembly codes you can do by you can do yourself by using different con different blocks you can develop that will be more helpful to you compared to that uh, other other controllers i am not naming the particular controller you can say other controllers are generally what they are doing they are uh, developing algorithms and they develop uh, they dump into that algorithm into they they, are, they convert that algorithm into a uh, code and then they develop a uh, dump into other systems so that is not here okay um this netly interface has a connection with matlab for example or you need to simulate in matlab and then implement that in in this netly platform yeah i will uh, i will show you here i hope I, my presentation is visible to you yeah yeah here is a uh, just uh, give me a second here netly uh, complete like it is a like different screen is there you are seeing right right we can develop or we can develop our algorithm in matlab thereafter we can check our our results in matlab thereafter the same data we can transfer to the netly also and the sec and the second time and second advantage is we can develop our algorithm in netly controller also like blocks like which i sh which i have shown earlier here see the same blocks that mathematical blocks same inside this netly inside this netly same blocks are there we can use this blocks and we can develop the we can develop the algorithm we can run this uh, algorithm in real time applications so there is a, if you strictly speaking if you design some uh, if you have some motor and you you prepare this algorithm if you give this to the hardware design like directly that motor will get run and the application which yeah of course we is showing here see we can develop we can develop directly here and we can see the results here and directly we can connect the same we can changes here if we are changes any kind of change here so we can see the same changes in real time application also that is that is big advantage compared to the other controller directly while you are implementing your algorithm you can change this you can you can change whatever you want okay thank you very much santosh um if, if there's no more questions we thanks to santosh Um, finally, we move on to the last presentation titled Power Quality Issues and Harmonic Performance Analysis for Nonlinear Loads in Power Distribution Systems by Amit Kumar. Are you there, Amit? No. Well, um, is Mauricio Sanabria, Irving Lopez, Francisco Beltran, or Maximiliano Bueno in the in the room? Mario, apparently the, the authors of the second paper, okay. the presenter Mauricio uh, is uh, in hospital by COVID. Oh, and sorry. And they would see if they would be can present another day later. Okay. Well, um, with this, we conclude the the session of Power Electronics. Is, is any other author of, of the last paper, Amit Kumar? Is there no? Is there the author? Okay. Um, okay. With this, we conclude the the session of Power Electronics. Thank you very much to the speakers, the assistants. And I invite you to continue
to continue um, enjoying the CCE 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.